my friends, it is, what's the date here? It's the 27th, March the 27th. Welcome to the Guitar Show. And friends, we're gonna be talking about my first aha moment with the Nashville number system. And I'm gonna be getting straight to your questions today. And oh yeah, don't forget, if you're serious about getting in the unstoppable guitar system, the offer ends today. Eric, what offer are you talking about? So glad you asked. The half off offer, the half off offer and uh, it's half off. So normally it's a $400 program. Today it's 200 bucks. Um, you can literally find the link in the description of the video and then we may even be posting it too at some point here. Coolio. Um, I have a live, or I'm sorry, I have a free program for you today, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. I'm gonna be talking about that quite a bit today. So if you hear me saying something about a free program, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram. Instagram folk, folks, you know the drill. Head over to Facebook or YouTube if you want your questions answered because I'm not looking at the, at the thread in Instagram. Cool? Okay, so I've said that for quite some time now, but I know folks are still probably putting questions in there. That makes me sad for them because I can't see it. And they're just wasting their little right? All right, so Coolio, friends, we're going to get straight into questions today. No horsing around here. We are no noodling, no nothing like that. We're just getting straight into it. So, uh, and today we're going to start, let's, think, let's see, yesterday I think we started on YouTube. So this morning, let's start on Facebook and we'll get straight to it, okay? So, you're going to hear me refer to uh, some, uh, some of those links later on today and I may have something else for you. Um, We'll just have to see. Now, my first aha moment with the Nashville number system, let's talk about it. So, started playing guitar when I was 14, went to college as a classical guitar major when I was like 18, was a classical guitar major for three years before I changed my major to music business when I moved to Nashville to go to school at Belmont University. So, was very well acquainted with music theory because I had been studying it and because I had three years as a classical guitar major and so you're constantly being inundated with all sorts of music theory classes and ear training and all sorts of really fun stuff. I aced all my classes. I loved being a music major. Uh, I went from like a, a really, really, really low grade point average in high school to a really, really, really high grade point average in college because I was doing what I loved to do, which was music. And um, all that being said, I learned some lots of music theory at that time as it more related to classical music. And we did what's called figured bass. And it's basically using the number system in a way. I mean, it definitely is using the number system. But with all that being said, um, I only applied it as to when I was in class and when I was doing my assignments, when I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, notating Bach chorales and stuff like that. That's what they have you do, right? Four part harmony, doing all these different bits and pieces. So I was just used to using that music theory for that, for class, to get good grades, all that. And I didn't really bring all of that into my own playing. I did every now and then I would learn a new particular something and I would bring it there, but not like the number, not the number system. And so in 1990, I moved to Nashville to come to school at Belmont. And I was, I don't know, 21-ish, something like that. And started jumping in right away, studio sessions with friends. And there was a studio there at Belmont. So we were always in the studio. We were always recording something, usually some sort of band that we had formed, uh, that sort of thing. And I really didn't think too much about the number system. I wasn't hanging out with the guys that were talking about the number system and just uh, the, the folks that were in my class and what have you, we just weren't really quite savvy on it. I started hearing about it more and more and then I started studying it. And my first real aha moment was when I was sitting with my wife, who's a songwriter. You guys have heard me talk about her a lot. And she plays her guitar, uh, so, you know, lefty, upside down. So the lower strings are on the bottom. So just like Hendrix did. And she... I had her remove one of the strings because it was a double. I think the sixth string was doubling with the fifth string. The way she tuned her guitar, she tunes it to an open C minor, which is ridiculous. It's so crazy. But anyhow, her father came up with that, that tuning because she did not want to play standard chords, yada, yada, yada. So she just got this, 
this fun little way of, of playing. All that being said, she wrote all these great songs, and she still does. She's a fantastic songwriter. And for what she lacks in her guitar playing, she makes up for it in spades in her songwriting, especially with chords and that sort of thing. Well, doing lots of gigs with her, I found myself having, you know, playing these hit songs, playing these great songs and rehearsing them. And it was just taking too long to rehearse. Like for me, I was like, there's no way that other guitar players are taking this long to rehearse songs that are this simple because they were just simple songs with like three or four chords in them. But for whatever reason, I was, well, I can tell you why. I wasn't thinking about the natural number system. The, the chords were eluding me. It's like I knew the, what chords were in the song, but I couldn't feel them moving from one chord to another. I knew when they moved, but I didn't know what chord they, they moved to. And then I, I had all these charts out, and I was big on charting and stuff like that. And I said, God, there's got to be a better way. And then I remembered back when I learned how to touch type. And then at some point I stopped just looking at the copy and topy, typing. I was looking at my fingers. I was looking at my hands. And what happened was is I kind of lost the ability to touch type again. Touch typing is when you're not looking at the keyboard, right? When you're just typing. And so I redeveloped that, but, but it got me thinking that, well, because I started looking, it made me dependent on looking more. Okay. There's a moral in this. Okay. And so the more that I looked, the more I had to look, the less I looked away and just trusted myself. I'd make a mistake, but then I would push through it, come back, correct it, and then re remember next time. And so what that taught me was that if I'm constantly looking at the chart, or in this case here, if I'm constantly looking at my fingers, then I'm not really ever going to learn to feel, to, to have some other sense take over. Just like when blind people learn to play the guitar, they can't, they're not using their eyes, right? So, so much more, they're, they're relying on their ears, which is a great thing since it's, this is an audible sport, right? music that is it's right it's it has to do with audio not so much yeah we look but it has to do with the ears uh so with that being said i said there has to be a better way and i embraced the nashville number system heard about it enough and i'm like let, let me see if maybe this helps so i started thinking about the chords as they pertain to numbers and voila my friends all of a sudden i wasn't playing to charts anymore. I didn't need charts anymore. And that sounds kind of um, like for some of you out there, you're like, well, that's a big duh. And other of, others of you out there are like, huh, I don't even know what the national number system is. So please, you know, this is, this is exciting. Let me know more. So with that being said, that ever since I started thinking more about it's thinking the, about the chords more in numbers, uh, things started opening up more in regards to how I could feel the chords because those numbers had certain rankings or had certain jobs to do. Okay, for instance, like with a, when you play a five chord, it almost always wants to go back to the one chord. The two chord a lot of times wants to go back to the one chord. Four chord oftentimes goes back to the one or the five or the two. Uh, there's all sorts of different rules, right? But as you start thinking about the chords in numbers, it will make a lot more sense. Now, for folks who don't know what I'm talking about, um, I can't go over the whole thing for you. I've got lots of videos on this uh, on YouTube. You can search Your Guitar Sage Number System. Uh, let's see. I have a whole course in, at, the, at the True Fire website, if you guys know the True Fire Guitar. And I have a whole course inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. Yes, that one that's half off today. So if you want to know more about this, I have the medicine for what ails you. But essentially what we're doing is we're taking, we're taking a, let's get out of this, bit here. We're taking the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay. And the only thing we're doing is we're assigning numbers to the notes instead of G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. We're saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Why is that helpful? Because now we have 12 different keys instead of learning all the letter names and the sharps and the flats and the yada, yada, yada. We're just learning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right? Because really, the only thing we care about is the ranking or what the responsibility of that chord is to do. This may not make sense to you right now, but as you get into the number system, it will make sense to you. And then all of a sudden, this stuff is revealed. So if I'm playing in the key of G and I have a one, a four, and a five, it's gonna sound like 
like I'm in the key of A, one, four, five, they have the same basic feel. Right, that's in the key of A. Here's in the key of G. Right, if I mean key of F. Okay, you guys know this in instinctively or inherently, but you don't know that you know this. So, for instance, you know, you go to sing Happy Birthday. You're at a, you're at a, a restaurant and everybody starts singing Happy Birthday to you. And do you think that everybody across the world is singing this in the exact same key? No, they're not. It's just whoever was the first guy to go, hmm, it's usually me, happy birthday to you, because it gives everybody a note to start on, okay? But essentially, all the notes are intervolically or relatively the same distance from each other, okay? So if we're playing the chords, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, then in the key of G, the one to four is always right underneath it. From, from the sixth string to the fifth string. Or if we were in the key of A, we went to the one, to the four, the key of A, it's the same thing. Uh, the key of B, same thing. And the five is always in the same place. So if that still eludes you, which chances are it will, it should, because some folks try to make this to be bigger than it is. It's not, it's real simple. Just count one through seven in the major scale, and that's it. And now you're gonna relate your chords according to the bass notes of those numbers. So if you're gonna play a one, It'll be a G. If you're gonna play a four chord, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, that's a C chord. And if you're gonna play the five, one, two, three, four, five, that's a D. That sort of thing, okay? Got lots of details for you on that, regarding that. All right, let's get into some questions, my friends. I told you I would do this. Uh, the national number system has really, truly changed the way that I think about music, so get into it, okay? Okay, so Ryan's saying, long one here. I'm still waiting for my first aha moments with the chords. I have the Alfred Handy Guide Guitar Chord Encyclopedia. Where did my comment go? There it is. Which shows chords in each key. Yep. Is this practical? Nope, it's not. Are there a core of essential chords for each key to stick to? Or do people really learn, memorize 252 chords? Nope. Um, kind of. Kind of they don't. I'm in, I'll tell you in a minute though. So this is something I will, uh, so you're in the UGS, of course you are. Uh, is this something I will find along the way? Yes, it's in this, it's start, when you're in the system, upper left hand corner, type in Nashville number system, and I'll walk you through it step by step. The ability to learn chords, assemble them on my own based on the standard scales for each note, that's something different, but yes, I teach all that inside the course. I can't help but feel this may be one of those things I might be getting ahead of myself. Nope, you're not at all. Super easy, I promise you. At this point, I seek your guidance. Okay, Ryan, yep, no, I promise you. Super easy, especially if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System because we start on, on the first video and then we walk through it video by video. So indeed, Ryan, if you're in there already, there's no need me, me drilling down with you right now because you've got all the tools right there. But here's the deal, this is why I say, Learn the nine essential chords, then be able to capo, because essentially you're playing the one and the four and the five and the minor two and the minor three and the minor six. You're playing all those chords in the key of G, in the key of C, but you're learning how to capo. And that's why I try to keep everything in those keys nice and easy for you so that you can see it's all the same, all right? So if I'm playing, watch this, if I'm playing in the key of G, G, C, and D, or one, four, five. But if I wanted to change the key, I could just put this capo here and now still got a one four five it's the same thing every time i'm playing my chords but i'm capoing going up and each time i do that i'm changing the the, the direct tonal center the, the actual tonal center of the song but the distance between the chords is the same and the flavor of the chords is the same major 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 one four five and so because of that, it's gonna have a basic same sound. You know, we could sing sing any song in any key, or we could sing a song in all 12 keys, and you're gonna identify the song. You may say, well, I don't know if that's the original key, right? There's something that's really low or something like that. But it essentially, it's all the same relative distance to each other. If that doesn't make sense, it's, it's totally okay. It didn't make sense to me in the beginning either until I had until I was handed the tools or I found the tools and then 
I've started using them, okay? So it's definitely gonna be, anybody having an issue with this right now, welcome to the club, okay? That means you're alive, that's all that means, okay? You're gonna have issues with this at first. If you get it, cool. Uh, most of you are not gonna get this at first. Even if you conceptually get it, you're gonna have to work with it some, right? If a magician shows you some sleight of hand trick, if they show you how to do the trick and you're like, oh, that's all you do, and then you go to try to do it and you're flum fumbling and you're dropping the, the, the assets, whatever it is that you're working with, your, your you know, cards or whatever, if you drop them, well then you might as well not know the trick whatsoever because you still can't execute the trick. So same thing here, if you conceptually understand, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, Eric, I got that now, but how come I can't apply it? Well, you've got to apply it, otherwise it's not gonna make any sense to you, right? So you definitely gotta dig in there. Well, why the black silver top knob on the red Gibson to your right for quicker reference? Oh, uh, nope, it's because all the silver parts on all the other knobs fell off. Actually, there's not one on here, but there was one here and here. So they just fell off is what happened. <laughs> How about that? They just fell off. All right, yes, loaded with top fans here today. I love it, Brian, Roddy, Ryan, beautiful. So cool. I know we have others in here as well. Fantastic. Remember, I'm only looking for those with a question mark as well. Got to have that question mark. How does 365 work hand in hand with UGS? Let's talk about it. And then I'm going over to fit to YouTube right now to get those questions. So 365 UGS. So let's talk about it here really quickly, my friends, because guess what? Because those are discounted today. Those are half off. Normally, 400 bucks, it's 200 bucks today, and you get everything in 365. So let's talk about it real super quick, because I have a video on this, and if you really want to drill down in detail, I don't want to waste time for folks that are not going to get the program today, but essentially, in on YouTube, search UGS, for Unstoppable Guitar System, UGS and 365. Search that, and I have a video for that specifically. But you think about it like this. UGS is as if you were here with me in Nashville taking lessons from me every day, and you were like, Eric, today I want to learn the Nashville number system. Or today, Eric, I want to learn how to improvise. Show me how to improvise. What's that all about? Uh, blues, that sort of thing. Uh, or Eric, show me the nine essential chords, or show me how to form chords, or show me how chords work together. All these different courses, over a thousand videos between the two courses, uh, are out there for you and half off today. 200 bucks. That's the cost of meeting with me one time for an hour. So it's a pretty good deal, okay? Because there's many, 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 many hours. I mean, do the math. It's like a thousand lessons and, I mean, some lessons are 10, 15 minutes long. So nonetheless, pretty long. Now, um, with that being said, UGS is like meeting with me every day. 365, if you will, is your assignment for that day just to get better and better at calisthenically moving around on the fretboard, okay? So seven different days, seven different focus areas, right, in one week. And we start off real super simple. And for 52 weeks in the year, right, for the next 52 weeks, I slowly crank up the heat so that you you start off really simple and then eventually you start getting more complex. But it, there's such micro steps. And if you just stick with it, you're not gonna feel any pain. You're gonna be like, dude, this is cool, all right? You're gonna feel challenged, because that's the whole point, because we're not gonna get good unless we're, unless we, we're challenged, right? Uh, there you go. All right. All right, so let's get, to, so we got the, to the questions on Facebook. Let's get to some questions on YouTube. And uh, friends, if you didn't join us yesterday, you gotta check out Colin Hill, uh, the gentleman who was here yesterday. Fantastic guitar player, super sweet guy. Um, and he he tore it up yesterday. So make sure that you guys check that out, okay? Also, don't forget, oh, another announcement. Forgot to tell you, we're doing another giveaway today. So here you go, you ready? Right here, this post on Facebook and on Instagram, we're giving another lifetime membership away to the Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. So only thing you gotta do is like, follow, and leave a comment on one of those, or both of those. If you do it on both, obviously, you're doubling your chances of winning. Okay, cool. I'll mention that again a little bit later. Good morning, anyone else receive a do not enter malicious site warning yesterday from the antivirus? Okay. That was not for me. 
Okay, oh, also friends, if you would, when you're posing a question, if you could do all caps, that'd be awesome. Helps me see it a little bit quicker, okay? Andrew is saying, is number one always the key the song is in? Yes, if you're using the number system properly, it would really need to be. Otherwise, you're just mixing everything up, okay? Number one is always the key of the song, at least when we're referring to the number system. Indeed. Great. It's a great question. Okay, now, now hold on here. Now, because someone, someone said usually but not always. So I'm going to say, what are we talking about? Talk about this. Okay, so let's see what he says here. He says, uh, usually but not always, the notes involved determine the key, not the order in which they are played. Right, correct. That is correct, but um, it's not exactly. So it's the, the it, what determines the tonal center in TBA1, you've got it really close to right. It's not what note it starts on necessarily, sometimes it is, but it also has to do with the notes and the chords that are involved, okay? So if you're in the key of C, no sharps or flats, you're gonna be in the key of C, but TBA1, not necessarily, because you could also be in the key of A minor, right? Could have a tonal center of A minor. Um, and then also, as I talked about with Desi the other day, if you're emphasizing a certain chord, but all the notes and all the chords are pointing to another key. You can also be playing modally, which means you're playing in a different key. So there's other stuff, but 99% of the time, whatever that, that first chord, last chord of the song, the chord that's played all the time, the one, uh, it's almost always going to be your tonal center. If you don't worry about the the things that rarely ever happen, you're gonna be good. If you're trying to focus on that and be like, ah, eh, yeah, but, then you're just gonna really confuse yourself. Try not to do that, okay? Uh, uh, Jacques, Jacques Bloke says, this system has been in classical music forever, but no, Nashville gets the credit. It's just numbering the intervals. It is, but not really, uh, Jacques, because Here's the deal. Yes, it's the numbers as it relates to the specific chord, right? That's just common sense right there, or the numbers. But there's more to it. And so you, you would have to study it to really understand what we're talking about, Jacques. So you, you're not going to have, you could take a Nashville number system chart and put it in front of a classical musician, and they probably are going to be lost, okay? You could take classical figured bass, which uses the numbers, and put that in front of a Nashville cat in the studio and they'd be able to work it out but they're going to be probably lost too because even though they're both using numbers and the numbers are representing the bass note okay it's still there's still other bits and pieces that go into the chart writing does that make sense and also why it's called the national number system is because no one really thought about the chords in numbers unless you're talking about like Baroque music. No one's thinking about the chords in numbers until like the 50s. I think it was, a, yeah, the 50s with Elvis Presley and one of his, one of his guys, uh, I know the whole story, uh, but basically one of his guys was, do, was doing so many sessions that he couldn't remember the songs and they would be doing back-to-back -back sessions with the Jordanaires, the singers behind Elvis Presley. And because they were doing, like, literally from sunup to sundown, just in the studio all day long, three, four sessions, they didn't have the time to rehearse anything. So what he would do is he'd listen down to the song, he'd write these out in numbers, and then the guys would sing it that way, and then people, that started catching on. That's why it's called the Nashville number system. Cool? But the numbers, as they relate to classical, yes, similar, you know? Wolfgang, can you please get to the point? Wolfgang, I will, but in order to get to Disney World, you have to get in your car and you have to do the first mile. So the number system is only is helpful to me if I use bar chords. It takes all the thinking out of the equation. Makes sense? Uh, yeah, it helps with bar chords, but it's also really easy to do with regular chords too if you know how to play your, your major scale across the fretboard, okay? Coolio. Okay, I only look for those with a question mark too. Can you explain how you use a th how you use three different chords for the same song by changing the key? Let me see if I understand this. 
can you explain how you can use three different chords for the same song by changing the key? Brad, I don't know what that question means. Okay, you're gonna have to say that in a different way. Uh, I can always tell from the way that folks pose a question that there's a piece of the puzzle that they're missing. So Brad, there's something you're missing because it, it doesn't make sense from a musical sense what you're saying. How can you, can you explain how to use three different chords for the same song by changing the key. Now I could play a song and use three different chords. Now there's only seven chords diatonically happening so I wouldn't be able to do three different sets of say three chords because that'd be nine chords but I could do three different sets of two um, but it's gonna be a different song and then as far as changing the key if we're all in the same key I, I, I just don't understand the question. So if you can pose that differently I will I'll try to answer that to the best of my ability. I have 365 in UGS week 16. I saw your lesson on not looking at the fret, so I play lessons in the dark on repeat until I get it to stop after each goof. Uh, Thomas, good, that's the way to do it. That's the same thing as, that I'm talking about here is not looking at your hands when you're typing. By not looking at the fretboard, it's going to get you more attenuated to the fretboard. Now there's nothing wrong with looking at the fretboard. All the pros do it, all the, all the live long day. Why wouldn't you? You got eyes, you can see it, great. Uh, but if you want to get better at feeling the guitar, then don't look at the fretboard and get used to that, okay? It definitely is not going to come out at first. This is a practice thing, okay? Okay, I'm not through the th first 30 days yet, first 30 lessons. I know the deal ends today. It does. But if I get it, should I wait till I'm through with the first 30 to start 365? River, no, because really, no. No, you can jump into it right away. That's the, that's the short answer. You can jump into 365 right away. And in fact, the actual program, you know, the, the first 30 lessons that I'm giving everybody for free here, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, that's the first 30 lessons inside the giant Unstoppable Guitar System course, okay? So you're literally, like, that's why I say it's the most important stuff that you guys have to know because it is, okay? It's not just like, okay, here's some beginner lessons. They're like legit, let's sit down, we're going to learn how to play the guitar, but we've got to cover these things here first, and they're the most important things, you know? Do you only teach pick guitar or finger style too? Uh, Manuel, I teach both. All sorts of finger picking inside the program, indeed. I wear contacts for distance, but they limit my close-up view. Would you take them out for live gigs so you could see uh, the guitar clearly and all those people watching you would be a blur? Advantage to stage fright. Yeah, that's a great idea, Larry. It's important to be able to see your guitar, but man, you must be seriously farsighted because like, the guitar's down there. Uh, so yeah, either that or get some, get some glasses. I guess for stage or something like that, you know? Team Memphis, can we start saying this Scotty Moore number system? Peace and love. Thanks. Thanks, Team Memphis. Yeah, but Scotty Moore did not create it. It was actually, um, I can't even think of the guy's name. I have a book by him, but it was one of the Jordanaires. So, yes, pretty cool. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for the donation, my friend. And we'll be, we'll be having lunch in your name today. Okay. Just purchase. Will I know when to do the 365, for example, after certain lessons? Jason, so glad you're in, my friend. Uh, Jason took advantage of the, the $200 off coupon we're handing you guys today. Link for that's in the description of the video. $200 off the Unstoppable Guitar System, or you can do it for three payments of $79. We also have other options in there, but FYI. Jason just got in. So beautiful. Just, Jason uh, just purchased. Well, I know when to do 365, for example, after certain lessons. Jason, you can do 365 separately. It's just another way to think about the guitar. Basically, it's like, okay, here's something new today. Practice this. Boom, go. And it's just like an exercise, okay, that's going to help you with a specific something. Seven different areas of focus. So it may be finger picking today. It's not, but I'm telling you, it might be, okay? Fridays, Fridays or Sundays, I think, are, are finger picking. Nonetheless, you would just focus on that exercise for that day, however long you can throw at it. Five minutes, five hours, whatever it takes. But you want to keep digging into the unstoppable guitar system. Think of that as just like lessons from me every day, whereas 365, you can think about that. It's like here is an exercise that you're going to work on today to get you out of your comfort zone and to get you to the next level. Okay, cool. 
Can you determine the relative minor of each key using the Nashville number system? Ken, yes. And in fact, Ken, it is uh, going to be the six of the chord. So for instance, if I'm playing in the key of G, then I can go one, seven, six. And so for the key of G, the E minor, that thing's way out of tune. I've been, I was whacking away on the whammy bar here before. Um, but yeah, you basically go down one and a half steps, okay? Go down one and a half steps from wherever you're at, and that's gonna be your relative minor. So if you're in the key of G, go down one and a half steps, it's E minor. If you're in the key of C, go down one and a half steps, it's, it's C major. If you're in the key of, yeah, you get it, right? If you're in the key of D, um, go three half steps down, it's in the key of B minor. Ted says, Rolling Stones, Rolling Stones, Wild Horses starts on B minor, but it, it's in G. Yeah, yep. It's the sixth chord. Well, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, off the top of my head, I, can, I don't know what key that's in. Um, I don't know what key it's in off the top of my head. I'd have to listen to the song right now. Okay, good, good, good. Great questions. What are some of the more common chord progressions? Big Ham is saying, okay, great question. Some of the more common chord progressions are in, in this order. The most simple chord progressions are one, five chord progressions, you know? Those are the most common, one and five, okay? And then one, four, five. I'm sorry, that, that was a one, and, that was one and, and four that I was playing. That's also a very common chord progression, one, four, but. Uh, sorry, I'm confused here. Yes, that's a one, one and five. So one and five, one and four, one, four, five, one, four, five, minor six, one minor six, four, five, one, really any combination of one, four, five, minor six, take any one of those chords out if you want, take two out if you want. Those are the most common chord progressions, bar none. Probably, if you just use those four chords in all the different combinations, you, you'll be playing 90% of the songs that have ever been written. Maybe more. I'm throwing that number out there, but it's gonna be a lot, a ton, right? Okay, cool. I started playing guitar about a year ago and I've gotten pretty good, but my problem is I don't know how to read sheet music. I've learned music theory, but I play by ear. Do I need to learn it? Tyler, probably not, unless you've, you're finding a need to. If you're reading music, then you're reading music and you're getting better at reading music. So, you know, do I need to learn it? No, probably not, because you're getting by without needing it, okay? That being said, sheet music's pretty fun you know, because you can look at something and be able to play it if you're really good at reading music, which that just is practice. That's the only thing it is, it's just practice. As you get better at it, then it's cool because you can just sit there and play a song that you've never heard before if you're playing it accurately, okay? Yeah. Vic is saying, hair, funny, but cool. Shave face, you'll look much younger. Great lessons on guitar. Thank you, Vic. Uh, are you trying to remember the name Neil Matthews Jr.? Howard, that's it. Thank you, buddy. That was it. Neil Matthews Jr. is one of the Jordan Airs. He's the guy that popularized the Nashville number system, okay? Which, yes, originally the numbers, it's just numbers going through the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's all it is. But then there's more, there's more to it, especially when it comes to notating, okay? And as far as I know, Nashville's the only city that uses it. They don't use it in LA. They don't use it in New York. Uh, what do they do? Well, they kind of are thinking about these chords maybe in that way, but they're not, they just don't notate them. Uh, so it's just kind of a Nashville thing. <clears throat> oh, those are, those are great questions, by the way. Okay, cool, cool, cool. 
Oh, thank you so much, Leon. I'm late. I uh, took guitar lessons when I was younger. I took Eric's system, and I'm much better. And now I'm much better. Hope you're all doing good. We'll never stop learning. Love it. Okay, how would you play a G major chord on a 12 string or any chords compared to the six string? Albert, you'd play them the exact same way. Okay, uh, 12 string guitar, basically, the strings are doubled up. Okay, so when you're playing one string, you're playing the string that's either one octave below it or it's unison, it's the same. That's how the 12 string guitar works. So you're playing the chords the same way. It just feels a little funky, okay? Because you've got all these strings underneath your, 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 underneath your fingers. What was the purpose of you just stretching all your strings? Ronnie, so glad you asked. So, uh, and I'm glad that you noticed that. So um, just now when, my, when I heard that my guitar was out of tune, I was using the whammy bar right before the program. I, I was just noodling and improvising and that sort of thing. And I use the whammy bar a little bit, which is I don't do that very often with this strap, but I but I do. And you know when, when we have tension on the strings, which you should, otherwise it's not in tune. You know, it's going from the post to you know the back of the guitar, the bridge, or whatever, and it's tight. And when you use the whammy bar, what happens is you're loosening the string and it takes some of that slack and it leaves it in different places on the guitar in a minute amount. I mean, in a way that you wouldn't be able to see, right? But you'll be able to hear it because then when you go to play your guitar, there's something out of tune, right? The, the strings are sharp now uh, because there's slack and it's being held up here. So what I do then is I pull the strings to pull that slack back out and then now I'm back in tune, okay? And this guitar has been set up by Greg Ellis, so it barely does it at all. You know, but it also has new strings on it, so they're still stretching out a little bit. Great question. Okay. <laughs> 74.6 of all statistics are made up, Walter's saying. That's right. That was made up. Mine was made up. How do you pick the guitar you'll use on any given lesson? Brian's saying. Uh, that's a great question. So what I like to do is I like to think about what, number one, what's going to move me, okay? I love this guitar, man, because it just has this certain sound that... Has this beautiful sound to it to me so if I'm just kind of noodling around I'll usually pick up the strat if I'm going in heavier and I want to play chords or I'm playing some Def Leppard or some hard rock some classic rock or something I'm gonna use something with humbuckers so these are single coil pickups and they just have more of that kind of hollow sound you know get it okay so yeah so it's kind of like different paintbrushes or whatever it's like what what inspires you, okay? And um, and if I'm teaching an ACDC song, I'm going to use an SG. If I'm using, if I'm playing some rockabilly, maybe I would use the Gretsch uh, acoustic. I would use the acoustic, you know? Yeah. Leave the beard. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I'm, I'll leave the beard. I was going to cut it off. Now I'm leaving it. All right, so last night I started jamming to your jam tracks. They're labeled cool, but I had trouble finding the 50s style jam track from your double stop lesson. Can you tell me the title of the old 50s jam track, please? Hmm. Team Memphis, I would have to have a link to that specific video. I've done so many videos anymore. I was literally on, on the phone with the guys yesterday and we were talking about videos and I'm like, oh, I need to do that video. And they said, well, you've done it. And I'm like, oh. Okay, and that happens all the time because stuff's flowing in my head here and then uh, did I do the lesson for that or not? It, you do enough of them and then they start running into each other, you know? What's the difference between your Ninja Guitar book and the UGS? Uh, well, there's a lot. I mean, there's some basic concepts that I teach inside of the Ultimate Guitar Guide, which is what you're talking about, Ultimate Guitar Guide 1. There's a lot of those concepts that are in that book are in the beginner section of UGS, but obviously 
you know, a book as opposed to sitting in front of a teacher and being able to ask them questions, thousand videos, something like that is going to be much different, right? So, uh, pictures, a picture, what a picture says a thousand words. What does a video, uh, what does, what, what does a video say? So in this case here, you have something like a thousand videos. It's just like way more than any book could hold. Okay. If you were a novice player and had two 30-minute blocks per day to practice, what would you work on for the first or two months? Chords and blank. Uh, so read. What I would do is I would go through the free program I'm giving you today. Okay, I, I promise you that is exactly what I would do because I'm teaching you the stuff that you're always going to use from here on out to the end of your life. Amen. Right there it is. Okay, every single time those videos are going to help I don't care what genre you're, you are in. I don't, forget, I don't care if you're a novice or an advanced player. There's stuff in there that every guitar player needs to know. And a lot of it's been left out on the table because guitar teachers typically don't teach in, in a very good order. They just don't uh, across the board. So this is going to teach you that stuff that you need to know and leave out the stuff that you don't need to know. So I would go through that first. As far as exercises and stuff like that, like if you're like, okay, I've been through that, Eric, what else do I need to practice? I would say work on a song that you like so that you have something to walk away with and because no one really cares about exercises and what have you, those exercises are meant so that you can be able to execute some great songs later on. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, Eddie's saying, I think UGS is a must-have more than the book. Okay, thanks. Thanks, my friend. What did Jimi Hendrix do that was so different from other guitar players? Albert's saying. Uh, you know, Albert, Jimmy, the, the way that he approached the guitar, you know, in my opinion, he, he approached the guitar just his own way. I don't think of Jimmy as being one of the best guitar players. Sorry. Uh, I think he's a fantastic guitar player, but there's so many other amazing guitar players out there. He's just one of many great guitar players, very inspiring, and just great licks and great writing and great all, great performance. Um, but the thing that made Jimmy so different was that he was just so in the moment all the time. He didn't play the same thing twice ever. He was just constantly noodling. So it was just like this kind of chitter chatter. But everything he said was was so cool. He was just like just talking to himself, muttering to himself, and that's how he played. As opposed to other players that are real succinct and they talk a certain way and they play a certain way and there's a definitive note and that sort of thing. Nothing wrong with that. Jimmy was not like that though. He he meandered and he just kind of added lots of little nuances and subtleties. That's why trying to duplicate him, it can be a little bit tiring because there's so many little things going on. He didn't ever play it the same way try twice. So, you know, here you are trying to mimic someone who doesn't do the same thing twice all the time, you know? Okay, when I strum on my Fender, I keep hitting that toggle switch. Ugh, yeah, it happens. Don't do it. You have to strum differently. These are the sorts of things that we learn as we're going along, right? We learn to to compensate or to fix things by just going, okay, I keep hitting that. Now, how do I not do that? Well, great question. Do, figure out how to not do that and then don't do that. Whatever you practice, you're going to get better at. Okay, um, jumping back over to Facebook here really quick, quickly. James is saying, do you need to have your acoustic strings lower uh, to the 12th fret as much as possible? James, no. Go see a guitar luthier and they will show you all about that. Or if you're in UGS, I have videos on this, okay? But it depends on how you play. It depends on what types of music you play. It depends on how hard you play. It depends on what you're playing, if you're playing leads or chords. All those things matter. And there's a special place. There's a quan, okay? It's not here and it's not here. It's in the middle, okay? As the Buddhists say, the middle way. Uh, so... Very important to understand that because a lot of people just like to slam their strings down and they wonder why their guitar sounds like crap. And yeah, they can play easier, easier Lee, more easily. Uh, but it's going to sound bad, okay? Is your new guitar ready to be picked up? It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Gary. It's not yet. It's not yet. I wish it were. I was laying in bed thinking about it last night. I'm like, God, I want to get my hands on it so bad. Okay, excellent.
Okay, you've answered this before, but for those who don't know, which should I start on first, the UGS or 365? Sky, yes, I've answered this one quite a bit um, and several times today. So watch that video, my friend, on YouTube, search UGS 365. Uh, but you should start on both. And there's nothing wrong with starting on both. Uh, the first day in you in 365 will take you like maybe 10 minutes to get acclimated to the site and know where everything's at. And then your first lesson will take you like five minutes to, to learn, but then you want to practice it for as long as you can, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, 20, um, whatever you can afford, okay? And then you can come back to UGS whenever it is that you want to know something. Like, hey man, I'm doing great with these exercises, but I really want to learn the cage system now. Boom, that's how you do it, okay? Does the Nashville number system match up with the circle of fifths? No, it doesn't. It, it relates to it, but it doesn't match up. Okay, good. Oh, thank you, Chuck. That's so kind. Eric, my friend, though, I'm new to UGS. Oh, I got to find this message because it was real sweet. Oh, man. Okay. I'll find it again here in just a minute. It was a really kind message. I wanted to, I wanted to tell you guys about it, okay? Uh, Eric, my friend, though I'm new to UGS, I've never experienced such an incredible way to learn. I can't get enough. You're an amazing teacher. Thank you, Chuck. Super kind of you. I'm so glad that it's helping. Thank you. Uh, Jude, can I sign up for the 50% offer on a year year long payment plan? No, Jude, we do have three payments of $79 and we do have a monthly version in there too. I don't know if we're offering that right now. I kind of leave that up to my guys. I, I got to focus on you guys. That's my job is to teach. Uh, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. You want to check out yourguitarsage.com slash UGS to know what all the bits and pieces that we're actually offering there, okay? All right, good, good, good. All right, we're going to pop back over to YouTube here in just, just one moment. Just making sure there's no other, other questions. On Facebook. Okay, that's it. All right, so here we are. Headed over to YouTube now. How could I learn to play like Marcus King? Great question. Now, this is going to sound really logical. It's going to sound like a lame answer, but guess what? It's the truth. Folks don't like hearing the truth sometimes. You know, they say, man, I'm overweight. You say, you, you got to watch your diet. Ah, don't, don't say that. You know what I mean? People don't like the truth sometimes, but daggone it, if we're, you know, if we're not going to just lie to each other and we want to move on in life and improve and shit like that, well, we got to be honest, don't we? So how do you play like Marcus King, Justice? You start playing like Marcus King. You listen to everything that Marcus does. You follow the licks. You learn the songs. You learn, you know, if I want to sound like B.B. King or Randy Rose or anybody else, I'm going to learn those solos. I'm going to learn those songs. I'm going to learn everything that they did because just like a child listening to their parent, they're going to pick up on all the accents, all the words that they say, the, and the inflections and the way that they say them, that sort of thing. And um, so it's really important that if you want to sound like somebody, then do that. Sound like them. But you got to start by practicing their stuff, you know? Uh, thanks for including Brett in your Groons visit. He is awesome. He is awesome. He's a great friend and a super cool guy. Great guitar player, great teacher. And yeah, I love him. Anytime he's in town, we get together, so... Okay. When playing a sliding A chord bar, do you mini bar the do the D G B strings or individually fret each string? Rich, it just depends on what I'm doing. You can do either, you know? It really just depends on what the sound is that you want. There is no right way. It's art. So you get to make up the rules. That's the cool thing about art. There's always gonna be somebody that doesn't like you, right? There's always gonna be somebody that likes you right? Always. So just do what makes you happy when it comes down to music and the people that they get it, what you're doing, they're going to follow you. They're going to, they're going to like what you're doing. The people that don't get you what you're doing, they're not going to get you. So there's no use, use in trying to, to uh, please them. Just do your thing. Be, be an artist. That's what an artist is. You know, you're just like expressing yourself. 
<clears throat> oh my God, please tell me that's a cheap Squire you're using as a lap desk. No, this is a 1965 that I'm using as a lap desk. You should see me eat my meals on here. It's, it's really nice. Uh, no, it is a uh, <laughs> lie to me, just as it's saying. No, I'm, I'm not hurting the guitar at all. In fact, when I got this guitar, I said, I'm not even going to bring it out. I'm not going to bring it to um, shows. I'm not going to play it for lessons. I'm going to just keep it on the wall because it was a very expensive guitar. But then I was like, why would I do that? I mean, look at this guitar and the way it plays. It's uh, so I use it all the time. Indeed. Yeah, as long as you don't abuse your guitars, you're fine. They want to be used. They want to be played. How sad for a guitar to just sit up on a shelf, right? I think about all these guys that don't play guitar, and then those those they have these beautiful guitars that they collect, and they just sit there. I'm like, oh my god, you got to learn to play, man. And I just smacked the headstock into the Gibson. Ack. Yeah, I did. Wasn't that hard. Uh, okay, cool. How do you mini bar? without muting the high E string, rich. So I cover this in detail in my bar chord videos, right? But essentially, what you wanna do is you wanna hyper extend this finger, okay? This is the third finger, okay? So notice that I'm hyper extending this, it's bending out, it's not like this, right? I'm doing this. There's a big bend right there. And so, I'm able to play that high E string. Now, okay, that's that's how you're gonna do it. And that's gonna take some time, right? It's gonna take a little, a little practice or a lot of practice. You're definitely not gonna get it at first. Heck, I've been doing that chord for decades and sometimes I miss it. It just is what it is. Okay, if you're jumping around between rhythm and lead, what sort of pick do you use? The, um, the same one, uh, Brian. If you're playing electric, you know, I like to use uh, typically a heavy pick. That's what I use. You used to use mediums, and when I just started, I used thinner picks. But I really like a thicker pick now. I like the way it sounds. I like the way it feels uh, for lead work and for rhythm. So I like to use the same pick. Now, if we're talking about acoustic guitar, I use a much thinner pick. And um, and then I just use that while I'm while I'm playing that guitar, okay. Great, great questions. Awesome, you guys are killing it today with the questions. All right, jumping over to Facebook, just checking, just checking to see if anybody has anything new to say here. Okay, no. All right, while we're waiting for another question here, friends, a few things. Got to check out the the broadcast that we did yesterday with Colin Hill. He's a great player, has great things to to tell you about finger picking and and all. We had a great episode yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. So check out that yesterday. The guy had been playing for five years the guitar, and if you saw the way that he played, it doesn't sound like five years. It sounds like much more than that, because he's very focused in what he does. And honestly, anybody can do that. I mean, really. Anybody can do that, but are you willing to pay the price like he did? Are you willing to put in the, and he was saying he was only putting in two to three hours a day, so that makes it even more exciting because two or three hours a day for five years is not that many hours put into the guitar compared to the way that that guy played yesterday. Did you just see that? Uh, I've, put, I've booked in way more hours than Colin, and I'm not going to be able to do what he's doing, at least finger-picking-wise, okay? Now, I would need to... I could, but I'd have to book the time. And remember, friends, you just got to remember that. I constantly use, use myself and other players that I have in here as analogies because if you don't understand that this is, that really anything that you want to do on the instrument, you can do. There is nothing except for possibly two things, your frame of mind, the way that you think. If you're saying, I'm never going to do that, then yes, you're 100% correct. And you might as well just not even try then. Just watch a bunch of TV, have some fun, go go have fun. Otherwise, I promise you that there's nothing that you cannot do on this instrument. If you're focused and you do it step by step, you have the right tools, and you do the practice, bottom line. Colin is, was was perfect, a uh, perfect example of, of that. So check him out yesterday because it was really impressive what he, would, what he was doing. And uh, if you notice, the things that he was saying are textbook 
to the stuff that I'm telling you guys all the time about how to break things down, slow it down, loop it, all that stuff. Like we talked about on Saturday, it's all the same stuff, okay? So it's this is something that when you're a player who's very um, hungry to play guitar, you find these ways, okay? And you find that one way works better than another. Okay, also, friends, there is a post that you're going to see on Facebook and Instagram. That's where they are. And you're going to do three things. If you want to be in the running for a lifetime membership to UGS slash 365, I'm going to throw in 365 there as well. When you join UGS, you get that. So I'm throwing that in there to, to some lucky winner today. It's over a $500 value. The only thing you need to do to enter to win is leave a comment like it, like the post, and be following us. Okay, that's on Facebook and Instagram. You can enter in for both. That'll give you double the chances. Cool. Got it? All right. Anything else? Oh, yeah, and the special ends today. The special. Eric, what special are you talking about? This weekend, we had a big old live broadcast. It was like four hours long. And then on Monday, I had two broadcasts just for my UGS folks, and then we did live yesterday and we did live today. So we've been doing lots of live here recently. Uh, but we had a four-hour broadcast on Saturday, uh, gave away over $6,000 worth of goodies, including a Les Paul and a Fender Stratocaster, and like seven copies, seven seven um, Unstoppable Guitar System slash 365. And that, we also announced that we were literally slashing the price in half. It's $200 off of the normal price of 400 bucks or 399 it was 199 it still is and it's only open until today it's going away today uh, or you can do three payments of 79 bucks it's a little bit more if you're doing the payments but for those folks that are willing to commit bam also don't forget it's a 30-day money-back guarantee so even if you're like man i don't know i don't know about enough about this guy he seems like he's teaching me what i need to know he seems like the right guy but i'm just new to him and i don't really want to commit you can commit today, but you're not really committed because you've got 30 days that you can say, hey, I don't want to do it. And the only thing you have to do is email us. You don't have to call your bank or anything, okay? Just literally email us and say, please refund 100% of my money or just say, please refund my money. It's not what I wanted. Too much information. I'm learning too much. The babes are flocking me. Whatever the, whatever the problem is, you let us know or you don't have to let us know what the problem is. Just say, I want out. And my friends, we will 100% give all of your money back, no questions asked, boom. We want happy people inside the program and we have literally thousands of folks in the program that are really, really happy, really, really excited. You'll see them commenting all day long on here and we want to continue that. We don't want anybody in there who doesn't want to be in there, okay? So I don't need your money. I appreciate it, but I don't need it, okay? All right, how does a player like Guthrie Govan play fast using chromatic notes? Josh, well, first off, he's going to practice those chromatic notes and those chromatic scales slowly. So you can't play anything fast without learning them slowly. And that's a very important lesson to learn, okay? If you want to play fast, the only way to do it is to know it and to play it slowly first. You'll never play fast before you play accurately. So I always tell folks, focus on accuracy. Don't focus on speed. Speed is something that happens. It's a byproduct of being accurate, okay? It's a byproduct. You'll never be able to play fast before you play accurate. And if you're concentrating on playing fast, that's what your focus is. It's always going to be, it's always going to happen way slower than you think, and it's going to frustrate you, okay? But accuracy you can do almost immediately, and you're going to have that reward there. And then you just slowly turn up the heat, slowly turn up the speed, and you're going to be amazing at this, okay? I promise you. Okay, here we go. Eric, I'm an Ultimate Prince fan. 35 years ago, uh, is he too much of a reach for my guitar hero? Absolutely not, Jason, no. Learn the stuff, I mean, learn the guitar solo for Kiss, right? I used to do that song live, and uh, I love that tune. But learn this, learn his stuff. Learn his the slow stuff first. You know, learn the stuff that is easy. And if you're a Prince fan, you're going to sound more and more like him if you learn all of his tunes, right? Because that's the way he's thinking. You're going to start seeing patterns that he thought about all the time. That's the way to sound like an artist. Definitely not out of reach. There's no guitar player. There's nobody in this chat right now, whether on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram is going to go bye-bye in a minute if they haven't already. But in all the chats here, there's nobody 
who could pick a Guitar Hero that is out of their reach. And what I mean by that is this. Tony Robbins is a hero of mine. I'm pr there, there might be a chance that I will not be able to affect the world like Tony has and have the money that he has and help the people and change the world like he has. Okay, maybe not. But I have my own thing to offer. I do my own thing. And that's the way you want to think about it. It's okay to have heroes. It's okay to have people that you look up to that you say, hey, they're badass. I want to get to know them. I want to be like them. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, shoot for the moon, right? Nothing wrong with that. Oh, thank you, 7565. I really appreciate that. That's super kind. Is there a difference between 365 and UGS? I got the $400 system two months ago. Tal, there is a difference. There is a difference, yes. And if you want to know, so I've already said this a couple times in this broadcast, Tal. So on YouTube, search 365 UGS because I'll be talking about it a third time. I want to save time for those folks that have been here the whole time, okay? On you on. YouTube search 365 and UGS and you'll find the answer to that, okay? Uh, there is definitely a difference and you definitely want to use them sim simultaneously, okay? So you, you can be learning from both of them, but they are different, okay? Okay, Big Ham is saying, my band plays a half step low. Do bands on Broadway in Nashville play in standard tuning and use the Nashville number system to adjust the key for vocals? Big ham. I guess it probably depends on the band. Uh, I would guess that most of them play in standard tuning, but there could be there could be some bands out there that play in a half step low. Uh, tons of very famous bands play a half step low uh, because they're touring so much, and the singer, after some years, starts losing their voice. It's just the only way to keep it from you know, to keep them sounding like they're hitting the, the same note that you're used to on the record. It's a half step low, typically. Uh, in some cases, they'll do a whole step low. So do they use the number system? Almost always, but they typically aren't using charts because they're using the number system in their head because they've played songs enough. There's nothing, listen friends, there's absolutely nothing that I'm saying that if you go, oh my God, that's amazing. There's nothing that you cannot do with the practice that gets you there. This is the whole point of my systems is that I say, this is this thing, here are the steps to get there, we're gonna break it down, and then you'll get there. It's like scaling a mountain, and you say, I'm, I'm your Sherpa, all right? And I say, go up this way, look out for that rock, look out for this ice over here, and you get around it, and you're, you're going, okay? So just understand that, that there's nothing that I'm, that I'm saying that you cannot do. But as far as the bands on, on Broadway, uh, they're doing this stuff in their head. In fact, get friends, uh, God willing, and the creek doesn't rise on Tuesday, I'm going to have Jacob Reynolds in here. Jacob Reynolds is a working Nashville musician. He works on Broadway all the time, usually does about five shows a week. Uh, he's playing covers, he's playing country, he's playing rock, he's playing all sorts of music. He's the, he's the lead singer of a band down on Broadway. And, uh, and he's going to talk to us about being a working musician and all these bits and pieces that we're talking about now. You don't want to miss it because he's going to be extremely interesting, okay, uh, to say the least, because he's literally in the thick of it. So if you guys are like, man, I really want to move to Nashville, I want to do this, that, the other thing, what Jacob's doing is what a lot of folks do. And, uh, and a lot of folks get, like, discovered that way. Somebody will say, hey, man, that, that guy's amazing. Or maybe not. But nonetheless, they're digging into the music the way it should be dug into every single night, or at least the nights they got gigs, and that makes such a big difference, right? The whole 10,000 hour rule, like the, like the Beatles, right? In the basement in, uh, Copen I think, Copenhagen, uh, the cavern. They just played songs after songs after song after song and, uh, and, and killed it, and that's how they got so good, okay? All right, good, good questions. P.S. Uh, it is not the Instagram, it is on Twitter today. Oh, yeah, you're probably, you might be right about that. Is that right, Mike? No, it's Instagram and Facebook. It is Instagram and Facebook. Okay, it's Instagram and Facebook. Yep. Okay, Uncle Jeff, what are you saying to me, man? You're throwing me off, bro. Okay. Um, Charlie is saying, Eric, I have to say you're a great online resource and instructor. I've been teaching almost as long as I've been playing, and I learn a lot myself from you. Oh, Charlie, thank you so much. That's super kind of you, my friend. Thank you for letting me know that. It always means 
a lot to me when another instructor says something like that because it makes me think that I'm not as crazy as I probably am. It makes me feel like I'm not, at least. And uh, it uh, makes me think that maybe I'm pointing people in the right direction. So thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate that. Metallica tunes standard on a record, Half Step Live. Yeah, that a lot of folks do that, indeed. Motley Crue is a whole step down. And Chocolate Randy, that's who I was thinking of when you said that. Yeah, they, they tune a whole step down on a lot of songs, even on the records. Yeah, like uh, Looks at Kill, I think that's a whole step low. Have I ever looked at the Yamaha trans acoustic guitar with chorus and reverb? I haven't. But every, like we talked about yesterday, every Yamaha guitar that I've ever played, any piece of Yamaha gear that I've ever had, I love. They, they, have, they have just great stuff. Good quality and, and very affordable. Mm. Nice. Joel saying, just signed up for $199. Early birthday press for myself. Looking forward to working with you. Yay, Joel. When you're in there... Say, hey, Byron's saying you won't regret it. Indeed. Thank you so much, Byron. Thank you, Joel. So glad you're in there. And yeah, 100%. Make sure, make sure you take advantage of it, right? The 10K hour theory has been totally debunked. Still, practice makes perfect. TBA. Um, I, I, I loathe statements like that. Not you, but I loathe statements like that because 10,000 hour has been totally debunked. No, that's not true. Um, if you practice 10,000 hours, it's going to be better than practicing 9,000 hours. Obviously, if you're practicing the right stuff. But uh, if what you're saying, you know, if you're, are you saying it, it needs to be more than that? Because I've heard people say 30,000 hours. So with that being said, what the 10,000 hours is just a number that somebody put on that, that showed, okay, if you're doing something, if you're dedicated, you're putting 10,000 something hours in, you know, maybe over, uh, over 10 years or so, that's 1,000 hours uh, a year, that would equate to somewhere around three, let a little less than three hours a day, right? That's not a, not a ton of time. So, Colin here, right? He had he's probably booked about five thousand hours on the instrument. Now, TBA one, what you could be talking about is like, okay, so there you go. He's practiced for maybe half of that, but it's a concentrated time. We're getting him today when he's very passionate about guitar. Uh, in five years from now, if he doesn't practice guitar and you say, hey, play all that stuff that you played on Eric's show that day, he won't be able to do it because you have to keep up with guitar, okay? Friends, I know some of this stuff is blowing your mind and you're like, man, that's harsh. It's just true. So like I could lie to you, but why do that? It's like, let's be honest with each other. If you stop playing guitar, you'll stop, you will lose your chops. You just will. Now you may remember everything, you remember where everything's at and all the theory and stuff because that's all up here. But you got to keep those fingers moving, okay? I know this from firsthand experience. When I don't play as much, I'm not as good. I can't move my fingers around as much, you know? Uh, have I heard of Dan Caster guitars? Oh, they were in Hamburg. That's right, Hamburg. And then in the Cavern in Liverpool. Oh, okay, thanks for, thanks for clearing that up. Okay, so the Cavern was in Liverpool? Is that right? Shoot, there you go. That's uh, that's they're my, one of my favorite bands, uh, but I just didn't know that. In Hamburg, the Star Club. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, HK, for, for clearing that up. Beautiful. But they booked a ton of hours there, right? I have not heard of the Dan the Danocaster. I don't know anything about it. How do you gauge when a new original is ready to debut or try out? Dr. Hoffman. I love questions like this, Dr. Hoffman. Great question. I love questions like this because... It allows me to say that, that, you know, this is all a continuum. Everything we're doing is on a continuum. We have to get out of this mindset, and this is for everything, not just guitar. We've got to get out of this mindset of best. You know, how do we know when it's ready? Um, you know, we're really hell-bent on that from getting on Amazon and going, what's the best blankety-blank? I want to see the ratings, right? That's good. It's helpful unless... The ratings are loaded or something like that but nonetheless you know we've got to understand that there is we're on it we're always on a continuum okay so dr hoffman how do you know when a new original is ready to debut or to try out it is completely subjective there's no saying because some people are going to like what you do and other people are not going to like what you do just get used to it you want to see this in action everybody here chances are 
uh, like what I'm doing. I every now and then we get somebody in here who starts throwing insults around and cussing because they learned a new cuss word that day or whatever. We get childish behavior in here every now and then, but it's pretty rare that anybody would spend their time here. If not, then they secretly love me and they're saying shit anyhow and they just, they secretly like me. Otherwise, why are they doing that on my channel, right? But, um, all that to say, someone's always going to hate what you do. Someone's always going to like what you do. Just get used to it. Check out the comments on any one of my videos ever. You're going to see 99% of the people are saying beautiful things, and there's always one guy who just stubbed his toe and got fired, and his girlfriend uh, you know, thinks he's a jerk and everything else, and so he's pissed, and that's the world we live in. And they... they they vocalize that. So Dr. Hoffman, they're going to say that to you. They're going to not like some of the things that you do. It's just going to happen. And uh, p most people are going to love what you do. So just ignore the people that don't like what you do and welcome the people that do like what you do and just serve them because some people just can't be pleased. Just that's the world we live in. It's always, always been. So I would say, you know, one way you might be able to gauge it is when you feel confident. But at the same time, there's always going to be somebody out there who doesn't doesn't appreciate it. It's just true. Okay. Um, I can't find it on Instagram. I do see on Twitter posted four hours. Even the picture you are posting to show us is a retweet and a Twitter screen capture. So you're messing with me. I, I'm not sure, Uncle Jeff. We could be. I don't know. Um, but I think I'm pretty sure it's on Instagram. Either way, if it's, if it's on Twitter, then do it there too. Uh, okay, I'm trying to get tone from a 70s band, Honeymoon Sweet, New Girl, New Girl Now song. I I don't find any info on a website, the band not so popular. How do I get that tone? Larry, see if you can find anything with them playing live. If you see the guy playing a Les Paul or the girl playing a Strat, then go with that. Okay, um, that's one way to do it. And then the rest, if you can't find that information, just... You know, do a bunch of Google digging, you know. If it's not a very popular search, then it's sometimes even easier to find because you're going to put in, you know, Honeymoon Sweet and then the name of the band, New Girl Now, Guitar, something like that. Uh, if you don't find it, then uh, you, you've got to just use your ears, you know. Do you personally prefer the acoustic or the electric guitar? I guess it depends for different things. I like the acoustic guitar and that it's so easy to bring around and that I don't have to fiddle with knobs and volume and pedals and everything else. So I like that vibe. It's very personal, you know, it's very intimate. Uh, but then again, I like all the bells and whistles too. So I'd say it just depends on my mood, okay? That's a, a cop out, but it's true. It just really depends on my on my work, you know? Um, okay. Uh, I just got a Gre I just got a Gretsch Roots uh, Double O. It's great and a real bargain for what it is. Ever play one or similar? No, I have not, my friend. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Indeed, Charles. And if you're practicing the wrong thing, then you're going to get really good at doing the wrong thing. You you will embed that within your your wherewithal in in your brain. PRS custom or Les Paul plus to pro for the second guitar. It depends on what you want, Reed. If you're a PRS guy, you're going to take a PRS, and if not, you're going to have a Les Paul. I don't really have an opinion in that. I don't love PRSs uh, because to me they're too similar to a Les Paul, and I don't like the, really the way they look. So I'm just a Les Paul guy, but that's me. You talk to Desi Serna, he's, he's a PRS guy, you know? Oh, look at this. So they demolished the original Cavern Club, but rebuilt it across the road. Oh, that's sad. Haters are going to hate. It's true, Joel. You're absolutely correct. I can never understand any thumbs down on these broadcasts. Beverly, it's because there's somebody who secretly loves me. It's like that girl in high, in, in, in high school. But it's like that girl or that boy growing up, you know, I would have these, whatever, a little girl or whatever, like, 
when I was a little guy, and they'd pick on you and do things like that, and inevitably they liked you, and guys do that to girls sometimes. So, so anytime somebody puts a thumb down on my stuff, I know that they secretly are in love with me, and they love everything that I do because they've taken the time to visit my video and do that. Uh, who does that? Who takes the time to do that, right? So, indeed, uh, there's some sort of weird psychology thing going there where people are at least giving you that attention. I don't really care about it because I don't even, I don't have the time to look at that stuff. I just don't. But it makes me giggle because, uh, yeah, when a live broadcast hasn't even aired and it has a thumbs down, you're like, okay, S someone, someone's literally, that's what they're doing with their time. They're like, Eric has a new video. Well, I'm going to thumb it down. That's what I do. Uh, cool. Yeah, some get off on the conflict. It's true. It is true. Eric, great uh, video uh, with guest Papa on, at Groom Guitars with a great jam. Thank you. I will do more guest appearance. Will you do more guest appearance videos with more jamming after all you're in Music City and you get to play more? Yeah, I would like to. I really would. Delete and block are my best friends. It's true. Uh, got any good tips and guides for, for mixing major and minor scales over a 12-bar blues progression? Bart. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about it. So what I would do is I would practice minor separately and then I would practice major separately. And I have videos for this on YouTube. You can search major blues, search your guitar stage major blues. Obviously, in UGS, I've got tons of stuff on this. Uh, BB Box, all that. Practice them separately, practice your major blues licks, and then start mixing the two, okay? The BB box is a really valuable little piece for, for playing both major and minor blues. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You love my sense of humor. It's true. So I should start thumbing down uh, you to show I love you. Uh, Uncle Jeff, it's, if it makes you happy... If it makes you happy. Uh, what are your thoughts about the Tonewood amp for adding effects to your acoustic guitar? Well, guess what? Oh, look, right here, my friends. I've got one. It was on my guitar yesterday. I was letting Colin play it, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's really pricey, so if you have the money for it and you play acoustic guitar a lot, then I think it's great. Otherwise, um, otherwise not. You know, it's, it's pretty expensive. But I do dig it. And the Collings guitars, yeah, the Collings guitars are pretty cool. Susie's so saying, watch the Paul McCartney Cavern Club. Uh, is that the one? I, th I just saw one recently here where they go and they just start playing and all these people start coming in, like, just like randomly. I thought it was amazing. Like, it, he just, I, I don't know if he went to the Cavern Club or what, but he just started playing in this club with with his current band and all these people started coming in and it was so cool i think it was james uh, corden i think is his name the talk show host i think it was one of those it was so cool all right good i'm bumping back over to facebook here real quick we're gonna go another 10 minutes or so my friends james just signed up for ugs yes all right friends real quick yeah let me tell you we're doing 200 dollars off the unstoppable guitar system today $200 off. The link for that's in the description of the video. This is the last day. We started this on Saturday, friends. It's going away today. So if you love paying more money and you love the way that I teach, wait till tomorrow and it will be full price. You can get in there and, you know, 400 bucks. But if you like $200, if you want 200 bucks in your pocket, then please allow me to do that for you today. I'm no joke. It's literally going up double, not double, the normal price. It's half off today. Uh, the link for that's in the description of this video if you want to go take advantage of that. Or you can do three payments of 79 bucks. Okay, beautiful. Nice, James. Uh, okay, Marion, at the risk of opening a can of worms, I love a can of worms, by the way. I have never heard you mention a female guitarist or have a female guest uh, yet, Eric. Any particular reason? Well, Marion, I've reached out to three or four girl guitar players now. None of them have gotten back with me. So either they're not seeing my message or for whatever reason, they're just not. And there's folks in Nashville too, so uh, folks that could get the exposure. So 
just not getting back with me. The guys get back with me like that. So I'm trying. I've, I've reached out to folks. If you have somebody who's exceptional that wants to be on the show, would love to have them. I don't care, male, female, or, or, or otherwise. If they can play guitar, I'm all in. You, you can get a, a chimpanzee playing guitar. I'd be down with that. Like, I just, just play some guitar. So, but I love... Um, <laughs> I would love that, yeah. Five years, no friggin' way. Yep, it's true. He was only playing for five years. Okay. Oh, Roddy, thank you so much. The only negative I have towards you is that I'd be a bit intimidated to sit next to you and play. I'm just not that good yet. Roddy, if it makes you feel any better... When I sit with great guitar players, I feel the same way. I just do. I don't know why, it's just a mental thing, but guess what? We're all human, we're all flesh and bone, and and those of us that aren't human are also flesh and bone. We're all beings with feelings and desires and fears and all the rest, and it's totally cool. You know, some people have uh, more or less than others, and it's not a big deal. So uh, you can work through that though, just like I have. I've worked through it. Laura Cox is awesome. I'd love to have her here. Yeah. Reach out to her. She wants to come on out, you know. Yeah, the girls probably think I'm flirting. I'm not. I'm saying, hey, that's great. In fact, there was a girl uh, There was a, a, a girl that I saw the other day just popped up in my feed on YouTube, and I forgot her name, but, but just cutest little thing, and uh, just playing and smiling, and uh, she, it was like, my first three years of playing guitar or something like that. And it was so good. And she, like each month, played something for the camera. And over three years, you could see her getting better. You could see her getting more confident. You could see where she was learning stuff. It's so cool to watch that whole process. And just the sweetest uh, disposition. And I reached out to her and I said, I want you to have my program. I think you're, you're great. Thank you for this video. And that was all it was. Uh, never heard back from her. So it's like some people don't check their mail. They don't check Instagram mail or whatever. So it's just... It is what it is, you know, but I'm down with that. Um, why are my posts not making the thread? Bob, that'd be a great time for you to, to have put your question there because uh, I just got what you said. In your program, you show how to memorize the fretboard. I'm learning chords now. Is it important to learn the fretboards early in my journey? Yeah, David, you don't want to spend just massive amounts of time with it, and it doesn't really take a lot of time. I don't sit there and rehearse the alphabet but I know it pretty good because I remember the song so you don't have to do that once you know it you know it the alphabet goes from A to G B and E don't have a sharp and I show you that the open strings are E A D G B E and using those three things you can learn the whole fretboard very easily and then you can make it even quicker using what I call springboards this is all covered in UGS the one that's half off today so yeah <laughs> Uncle Jeff, so close to sending you a lap desk. I have them. I've got all sorts of desks, but this is much more comfortable for me. Like this. Poison Ivy from The Cramps. Oh, man, I remember that band. Yeah, I don't know where, where she lives, but yeah, it's fine. I would love to have her here. With all the guitars you have, have you used your Variax on stage, and would you again? Uh, I love my Variax. I just don't play it very often, to be quite honest with you, because now I've I'm, I'm been buying all these great guitars over the years, and I don't have as much of a use for that guitar, uh, except I don't have Rickenbackers and 12 strings and stuff like that, So I'm or sitar, so I'd use it for that. I think it's pretty cool. But no, I don't, I don't do it very often. I don't use it very much. Okay, great, great, great. Oh, sound music. Yeah, thanks so much. Brian uh, Brian Shirell, uh, Active Melody, actually, he reached out to me, I think, like yesterday. I just haven't had a chance to get back with him yet. It's been, as it always is, it's just nonstop here, so. Okay, cool, coolie, coolio. Uh, we're going to go about six minutes here. Desi went with a full desk on his new live shows. Huh, I need to see it. I need to check it out. Okay, popping over to Facebook here real quick. Make sure there's no questions there. Ask your missus if you could have Amanda Shires 
as a guitarist, one hell of a songwriter and violinist. Hmm. Oh, my missus doesn't care. She knows me. She knows that I'm that I'm crazy about her. I'm not I'm not going anywhere. Um Yeah. Okay, that was the only question there on Facebook. All right, heading back over to YouTube. Eric, check out T.A.J. Ferrant, nine-year-old playing guitar for two years, must see. Yeah, Bob, so like this happens a lot of times too, is that you'll have a, you know, people call them prodigies, whatever. I hate using words like that. I hate using the word talent because it's just so overused and it makes people lazy. Bottom line. Anybody watching this probably is not in that mindset because you've heard me say it and I would have pissed you off enough to get rid of you. When people talk about talent, what they really mean is, you know, what they, I think a lot of people when they say talent, what they, what they mean is this person just has this innate ability. Okay, I think that's oftentimes what people think. But what is really is the truth is this person has practiced focused, has practiced a lot, a lot in this period of time. There's also sorts of things that we could say. If you take someone, let's say Colin, for example, he was here yesterday, right? He's practicing two to three hours a day. That's not a ton. In the beginning, I was playing way more than that, okay? But he's doing very focused. He's being focused just on the acoustic guitar. That's really important. And all of this two to three hours is doing every single day. And when he came in here yesterday, he said, can I warm up? So he just started playing right away. He was warming up. Very, very concentrated. I don't do that. I don't hardly ever get to do that. Like before the broadcast, I'm talking with the guys. We're talking about where it is that we're, you know, giving you guys PDFs and free programs and the, the eBooks and all the rest. And so I'm doing this stuff nonstop. Colin comes in, head down, acoustic guitar, not the electric. Uh, I got to practice. I need to, I need to warm up. And that's all he did. So then when he played for you guys, he was ready. Okay. Coincidence. It's not, that's just the way you do it. If you want to be good at something, you do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then you're going to be good. If you just do it a few times, you'll be that good or that bad or that mediocre. It's like I say all the time, if you want to be amazing at the guitar, practice a ton. If you're totally fine with mediocrity, you don't want to impress anybody, just get the job done, not get anybody to raise their eyebrows or go, oh my gosh, then just practice a medium amount. And if you're totally fine with sucking, then don't practice that much. It's just that simple. It's, it's math. And I know that some people get mad when I talk like that, but that's just being honest, okay? This is not a feel-good channel. This is, let's, let's be serious. Let's get down to work. This is what it's going to take for you to get to the next level. Here are the steps. Then you do them. Then you're at the next level. It makes life so much better than lying to oneself. Oh, so much better. Eric, thanks for all you do for the guitar community and teaching us beginners how to play. You're so welcome, Tal. Thank you. Super kind, bud. How long will the UGS be on sale for a dollar? It's not on sale for a dollar. There is a trial offer for a dollar. Um... And I don't know how long we're going to do that. We've taken that, we've we've had that, and we've taken it away. We've had it taken away. We, we've done different things with it, uh, so different products. But that's a trial, you know. So you're getting everything. You get to test drive it, if you will. And uh, and yeah, it's a buck, literally. And is it the same as the free course, or should I just wait to complete the 30-day free lessons course first? I'm up to lesson 20. No, it's totally acceptable to do that, uh, Thidius. It doesn't matter. It's you're talking about the same course, okay? The thirty, uh, the thirty day free. Well, let's get this straight. Thirty, the the free thirty lessons. You have that for life. You can do that whenever you want, okay? Hey, subskip sage. Uh, can I kick? Can I get a kick in the butt to focus more? I'm getting hit with practice ADD. Yes, I'll kick your butt in just one moment, Craig. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so. Here's the deal. The $1 offer is you basically get to test drive the whole program for, I believe, like 29 days or 30 days or something like that. Maybe 14 days. Just go to you, go to yourguitarsage.com slash UGS. I got too much stuff to remember. Okay? Just go there and check it out. That's $1 offer. It allows you to test drive everything. The, th the free 30 lesson is yours to keep for free. You take as long as you want on it. They're there. They're for you so you can get better, okay? They're not there for you to post on YouTube. They're there for you to get better, okay? That's the difference between those two. Cool. Cool. 
Okay, cool. Uh, appreciate that. Fantastic. Thank you. 52 years old. Uh, I haven't picked up the guitar since I was 12 when I got bored with it. And your videos are teaching me with simplicity. Thanks, man. Thanks. You're, you're so welcome. Um, I appreciate that. Fantastic. Susan Wheeler saying, Caroline Jones. That sounds like somebody we could have on the show. Yeah, reach out to them. Have them reach out to me. And, uh, and I'll check them out if they're, if they're worthy, if they're worthy to, to, if they're showing people stuff and they're great players and all that good stuff, would love to have them on the show. So sub skip, I'm getting hit with practice ADD. So let's talk about it. So number one, thank you so much for the donation. It's just me and Mike today. So we're going to go out and, and, and party hard after this. We're going to get a little bite. But, um, so here's the deal. Focus uh, is really just, that's really what it comes down to. So if you can identify the things that are keeping you from being focused, that's going to help. Just eliminate those. Every single night when I go to bed, I turn off my phone. I didn't turn off my phone last night. That's when my brother called me three times and I finally picked up the phone and said, what do you want? Uh... <laughs> It turns out that it was it it was a it was an important call, but nonetheless, um, I was knocked off my game because I wasn't focused. Right, I was tr trying to focus on my eyelids. I was trying to focus on sleep. Here, this phone wakes me up. So, do away with things that are keeping you from being distracted. I know that sounds obvious, but if things are distracting you, then you're not doing it. So it's one thing to understand the concept of what I'm saying. It's a whole other thing to do it. Right. This is why we're all here. Uh, if I'm telling you to practice, 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 here are the things you practice and you're still not there, then obviously there's a little bit of disconnect or you're new or you're doing this and you're just getting supplemental information and all the rest. So there's many reasons, but it's, it's about focus, it's about practice. So Craig, what I would suggest doing is finding something that really, 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 truly, truly moves you, okay? Your why. What's your why in playing guitar? I ask this all the time. Once you get your why, you know, then you're going to get up every day and you're going to be able to do that. And you're going to be able to focus and you're going to be able to have fun. So make sure you're doing something that absolutely juices you and moves you, wants to make you move forward. Okay. All right. That's what to do, my friend. There's too much fun stuff to do. Yeah, so focus on the one thing that you're interested in doing right now because there are. There's 10 million things that you can learn and there's no need in focusing all those things. Just focus on the one thing that you want to do right now. Right now, I'm loving some old Def Leppard. I just want to learn some old Def Leppard tunes and I'm going to be doing some ACDC for you guys and, and all sorts of bits and pieces. So I just focus on that for the day. Uh, that's going to make you so much of a better player indeed. Okay. All right, my friends, heading on out. Uh, don't forget the post that is at Facebook right now and the post that is at, uh, it's either Twitter or Instagram, one of the two. Uh, just go there. You can check, you can check all those out. That's Instagram right there, my friend. That's Instagram. Keep on someone saying it's Twitter. That's Instagram. You're looking at the wrong post, my friend. Uh, so it's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. Go there, like it, comment, and make sure you're following. That'll put you in the running for to win a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? Uh, do that, if you would, please. And then also, friends, it's going away today. What's going away? The $200 coupon, dude. No joke, we're handing you two Fat Benjamins, essentially, to get inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. $200 off, you're gonna get everything in the Unstoppable Guitar System, lifetime membership, the program keeps growing. I keep putting stuff into it, okay? Every single month, new stuff is going into there. 600 jam tracks, 1,000-something lessons, including UG, uh, including 365, the 365 guitar plan, which I'm including as well. If you're serious about it, friends, get in there now. If not, keep, keep just doing whatever it is that you're doing. No, there's no offense. I don't need the money. Uh, but if you need the help, if you need the guitar playing, if you need the teaching, it's like meeting with me here in Nashville. So you're going to find that link in the description of the video. My friends, thank you so much. Great questions today. You guys rule. Both Facebook and YouTube, you guys were on point today and great questions. Um, remember, I'm here to help you get to the next level. Uh, I don't pat Heinies very, very well. Uh, I spank them real hard. Okay, I say, you got to get your ass working on this thing. I'm not going to tell you you're, you're good. Mama loves you and everything's going to be okay. Even though that may be true, we got to get serious with guitar. And the only way we can do that is to be focused and to, and to, to do the work. Okay. 
I don't. I hope I didn't offend anybody today. I truly love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. I'll see you guys uh, in the next video or next live broadcast. See ya. Thank you.